that had given him birth. He was God incarnate, come down to the earth. The wonder of wonders as the Father looked on in eternity. Isaiah spoke the word that a mighty one would come to bring healing to all nations and restore Jerusalem. Many centuries then passed till the perfect time had come. Then a little boy was born as a lowly carpenter's son.
I'm, I'm glad I know him. That's my favorite song we've ever done. But it just gets me when he gets to the part that that little boy was born to a lowly carpenter's son. Gave it all for me. Gave it all for you on that silent night, holy night. Page 439 in your church hymnal tonight. 439, silent night, holy night. Let's stand together. Please remain standing now as our pastor comes. Brother Braden Smith, would you lead us in prayer tonight? Thank you, Father. Again, for this night, for the opportunity and privilege that we have to be back in your house. Lord, we're thankful that the doors are open, people are here, and we're worshiping our Savior, our Lord, our King. Lord, we're thankful that you've allowed us to be able to be here tonight in this place. Thank, thankful that we are uh, still under the freedom of religion here in America, that we can worship you. God, we know that there's places all over the world right now. God, during this Christmas season that are having to hide Bibles, hiding the name of Jesus, Lord, but they're still worshiping. Yes. God, may we Thank not take our, 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 our opportunities here for granted. Lord, I pray you touch the service tonight. Lord, I pray that we magnify you, lift you up, and glorify your name. God, I pray you touch our pastor as he comes. Preach him like he's never preached before. Lord, help us as the listeners. God, to be able to heed and take hold of what he's preaching. Help us to go out into the world, be better servants, better uh, faithful Christians for you. Lord, we're thankful for this time of year. As our pastor said this morning, although we may not know the exact day that you were born, Lord, we take this time to reflect on that you did come. Lord, that you did uh, live a perfect life. You died a perfect death doing something that we could not do for ourselves. 
God, I beg you and I plead with you, if there be one person here tonight that does not know you as personal yeah. Savior, Lord, I pray they'd come to know you tonight before it's eternally too late. Lord, help us to give us all your praise, all your honor and all your glory, because it's you alone that's worthy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Shake hands if you can reach somebody. If you can't, we'll smile at them, wave at them, whatever. Good to see you in the house of God tonight uh, to, for this service. We had a great service this morning. already begun another one tonight. And so we're looking forward to God blessing every heart that comes through the doors of this church. We welcome our visitors. If you're here for the first time, lift your hand. The ushers will bring you a card to fill out. Then Wednesday night at 7.30, our midweek service. Master Club meets on Wednesday night also. And then next Sunday is Christmas Eve. And we're not going to have Sunday school or an evening service. We're just going to have one service at 11 o'clock a.m. next uh, Sunday. So remember that. Then the following week, New Year's is on a Sunday also. And so we're going to have, uh, let me see if I can remember all these things that we're doing. We're going to have a regular service, Sunday school and preaching on Sunday morning on, on uh, New Year's Eve. We will not have our 6.30 evening service, but we'll meet at 11 o'clock p.m. that night. And we're going to pray out the new year, old year, and pray, pray in the new year. And then after we get through with the service, we're going to go down to the gym and have breakfast for anybody that would like to join together. We'll just fellowship around our breakfast there for a little while. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, Brother Billy D. Uh, that uh, we pray, asked prayer for this morning up in Charlotte. He went home to be with the Lord this afternoon. So be praying for the family that God will strengthen them during this time. All right, ushers, you may come. We'll receive the tithes and offerings you give tonight as the Lord has blessed you. Thank God for the way the Lord is blessing, and we just want to continue to give Him glory and praise for all that He does and has done and what He's going to do. Brother Danny, lead us in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to be back in your house, Lord. We count it a privilege to be able to come to your house. We thank you, Lord, for this place, what it stands for. And we thank you, Lord, for this choir. Thank you, Lord, for Sammy Jr. and all the hard work yes. that they've done to put in what they done. Lord, we just want to thank you for them, Lord. Be with the preacher tonight as he breaks the bread of life to help us plight in our hearts and lives that we would be better Christians. Bless this offering. We'll be careful to praise you. For it's in Jesus' name we ask. Yes. Amen. 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 Amen.
Glory. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, choir, again. Did another wonderful job. We appreciate that tonight. For a few minutes, if you will, turn to John chapter number 8. This is on page 1127 in the old Schofield Bible. This is uh, John chapter number 8, verse 41. The Bible says, You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Now here's that religious hypocrite crowd saying God's their father. That's what they're professing. That's what they're saying. And Jesus said, If God were your father, you would love me. Y'all just sang about it. In one of your songs there, the phrase, loving him. We love him. And so I didn't know y'all were going to sing all of these good songs, but brother and sister, they really do lift our spirit and bless our hearts. But if you, if you really have God as your father, you're going to love Jesus. Amen. And if you don't love Jesus, God's not your father. Right. And that's just as plain as the nose on your face, what he is saying right here. He said, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came down from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. The Bible tells us, and we want to talk about this maybe later on, how that God sent his son, because this is Christmas time, and this is gift giving time, and we don't want to forget God's greatest gift of all, his unspeakable gift. And then he goes on down verse number 44, and I'll say this again in a little bit, I think. But he said, you are of your father the devil. Whew, man, that's tough preaching. When you tell a man or a group, you are of your father the devil. You don't even know God. God's not your father. Jesus didn't bat an eye. As we have been teaching in Sunday school, when Jesus speaks every time he speaks, he speaks with boldness and with authority, and he tells the demons to shut up. That's what he told them in our Sunday school lesson the other day. And uh, he told them to hold their peace, be quiet. And Martin Luther said that he meant be sh to shut up. And that's what he did. And the demons had to do exactly what he said do. They couldn't do anything else. Jesus is the authority tonight. What a Savior you and I have. And years ago, he went to the cross. Years ago, he was born uh, in Bethlehem of Judea. Uh, born of a virgin, and we're celebrating. I hope every day this week and through Christmas we'll be. And by the way, I've been searching. I told Brother Ron a while ago, I was searching this week trying to find a program about Christmas that I could see it and enjoy. And I turned through station after station after station after station, and they were celebrating Christmas with booze and dancing and carrying on and frolicking and not one mention of the Son of God. Not one mention did I hear of the Son of God all week long looking, searching. Now there might have been some on that I missed it. I don't know. But I didn't find one. But they were celebrating Christmas worldly wise, doing it worldly ways, and brother getting drunk. They were just headed that way and dancing and carrying on in the flesh. Brother, I don't care about that. I don't like for people to blaspheme my Savior. And I've known of people like Willie Nelson, uh, last year, year before one, he had a blasphemous thing about the virgin birth. And I don't want to ever hear Willie Nelson sing again. I want him to get saved. I want him to get born again. I don't want him to go to hell. I don't want anybody to go to hell. I want everybody to go to heaven. That's why I'm preaching tonight. I want somebody to get saved. But I never want to hear him sing another thing as long as I live until he repents of that kind of thing. I remember uh, Larry Gatlin years ago, years ago, he was singing a song, if they don't have Mogan Dagan in heaven, who the hell wants to go? Now, that's what I heard him sing now. Now he's acting religious, making money with Bill Gaither and all the rest of that crowd. And I listen, I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not one of these just condemn everything, but when you talk about uh, going to hell would be better if you didn't have liquor in heaven. That's blasphemy. And brother, I don't hear anybody like that sing to me. I want somebody to say, glory, what a Savior. I want them to sing about Jesus. I want them to tell me the truth about Jesus. If you can't sing and glorify Him and praise His holy name, keep your mouth shut. I don't want to hear it. And you say, well, you don't have to. That's right, I turned them off. 
I turn them off. I don't sit there and listen to it. After I hear them blaspheme him one time, it goes off forever until I hear them get on public and repent and, and testify. I was a fool for doing that, and I'm sorry that I did that, and I want to confess that I've asked Jesus to save me. Now, that's my attitude. But Jesus was plain man alive. I mean, what preacher would stand in a pulpit today and say, you are not of, of your father. God's not your father. You are of your father the devil. Point your finger, his finger out at you, well, you'd run him off. You wouldn't stand for that kind of preaching in this day and hour. Most people would not. But Jesus was God, and he could say what he wanted to say, and he said what he wanted to say. In John 1, 12, the Bible says, as many as received him to them, gave he power to become the sons of God. Now that's how you get saved, by receiving him, not cursing him, not blaspheming him, but uh, receiving him. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, the Bible says. God the Father revealed to you and me through his son, Jesus Christ, just exactly who he is. I know the Father. He's my Father tonight. I'm glad He's my Father. You know why? Because I love Jesus. <laughs> I love Him. From the depths of my soul, I love Jesus. So I know, hallelujah, according to the Bible, God is my Father. And so right here in 1 John 5, 1, the Bible says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Now, you know, I've got so many things going through my mind. I could preach against the NIV right now. I could hang up here and skin them alive because of their lies. The NIV Bible is not fit to have because Donna and I have been discussing some things, a great preacher on television, and he's an educated man, and he's saying things derogatory about the King James, but he won't say one thing against the NIV. Now, the NIV is a damnable thing because it's tricky. Because I, and I could give you scripture and preach on that tonight. I don't know what I'm going, where I'm going, but I know one thing Jesus Christ is my Savior. And I want to honor Him during Christmas. I want to praise His name during Christmas. He's number one to me. I don't care if I get one gift uh, of this world. I don't care. I've got everything I need. I'm not a rich man, but I got everything I need. But most of all, I've got Him. And I'm more proud of being a Christian than anything I know. I'd rather be an old-time Christian than anything I know. So right here, 1 John 5, 1, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Now to teach that God is the universal Father of all is a false doctrine. People say, you know, he, we are all God's children. That sounds good, but it's a big lie. We all in the world are not God's children. Now, we are God's offspring by creation, but we're not God's children until we're born again. You must be born again to be a child of God, Jesus said. So, he said, you are of your father, the devil. Now, what are some of the evidences that God is really our father? Well, first of all, faith. I believe God. I believe Jesus. I believe the blood. I believe the cross. I believe it all. I believe this Bible. Believe it's the Word of God from cover to cover. Don't believe there's a flaw in it. Don't believe there's a mistake in it anywhere. And for any preacher, I don't care if he is a, a big-jawed rascal. I don't care if he does have a big old church or whatever. I don't care what his position is. If he says anything derogatory about this Bible, I write him off. I just don't want to hear him. Smart addicts. Think of no more than God. It hurts me. makes me angry. And that's righteous indignation instead of mad, you know. I don't get mad. Christians don't get mad. They just get righteously indignant. But Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. In John 3, 18, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Why? Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So if you don't believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God, who Jesus is, then you're not saved. You say, well, you're judging. Yes, sir, I'm telling you what the Bible says. God's the judge, not I. I'm not the one writing this thing. I didn't produce this. God did. And so one true uh, evidence that God is our Father is our faith, but not another thing. Our, rec our reception. 
In John chapter 8, verse 47, he that is of God heareth God's words. Now, this is not talking about hearing God with just your ears. This is hearing God from the heart. In other words, you hear the Bible, you hear the Word of God, and you don't say, well, you know, I've heard that before. You say, I accept that into my heart. I believe every word God says. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it's a heart thing. And I'm not talking about the little heart that beats in your breast. I'm talking about the innermost being your soul believes with all you have. I believe, listen, I believe with everything I am, with every fiber of my being, I believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. He was buried in a barred tomb. He arose from the grave and he lives forever and his praises for us to sing. And then uh, not only faith, not only reception, but our abiding. In John chapter 15, verse 4, Jesus said, Abide in me, and I in you. He said also in verse number 5, He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, uh, the same bringeth forth much fruit. You know, if you were to take some seed, of a, a, a variety of seed, uh, let's say corn, and <coughs> wheat, and barley, we go out into a field, 10 acre field, and we plant, we sow those seed in that field, different parts of that field. And then after the seeds are buried and we can't see them, then maybe we'll be a few days go by, we'll forget. Now, what did I plant here? Did I, did I sow corn or wheat or oats or what? What did I sow there? I really can't remember. But you know what will prove what you put there? It's when it bears fruit. When it comes out of that ground. A corn stalk is going to have ears on it. Oh, I planted corn there. Wheat's going to have a golden uh, tassel. It's going to have a golden grain on the top. Of the, oh, I planted, I planted wheat there. Yeah, it'll tell you. And you know how you can tell a Christian? Somebody loves Jesus. Fruit bearing. Whenever we bear fruit, brother, it shows up, and there's no mistake about it. Boy, I could come out there and hug every one of y'all. I could just hug you and love you because, and I'm talking about spiritually now, because I know that I've got brothers and sisters in the Lord in this church tonight. I'm glad that if the rapture took place, I don't believe there'd be a single one. Now, I may be wrong. There may be somebody sitting here and you're pretending. There may be somebody sitting here and you've never made a profession of faith. Well, you're lost. If the rapture took place, we'd all go but you. You'd be left right here for the Antichrist. But listen, if you're saved, every one of us would leave here and this would be an empty building. Then Antichrist can have it. Do what he wants to with it, because I'm going to be over in a better place. Thank God. Does that not kind of move you down deep inside to know what we have in Jesus Christ? Friend, this is not a fable. This is not a little old put up, made up, man made religion. This is the word of the living God. God said it. And we can stand on what God has to say. So if we sow those seeds, we'll recognize after a while just what we did sow. Now, what proof do we have that God is our Father? All right? You know, we have children of God, and we also know that the Bible says that there is such a thing as the fruit of the Spirit we preached on the other night. And, of course, love, joy, and meekness, temperance, and all these other things. The fruit of the Spirit. And a Christian that loves Jesus will show forth those uh, particular parts of the fruit of the Spirit. It will show up in that life. Love. Boy, listen, you will love if you ever get saved. You say, I hate him. Don't say that. Because if you're saved, you're not supposed to even feel that, let alone say it. Now, there are a lot of people that I hate their ways. I hate what they do. I hate what America's doing, but I love America. I hate the sin of everybody, but I love those, those souls. But like I said about Willie Nelson, I want him saved. And I don't hate him as, that, as far as that goes. But I hate what he said, what he did uh, in his little musical several years ago. Now, I don't know if I can get a copy of that anywhere, but I saw it on television. That's where I saw it. So, the Bible tells us in Matthew 28, 19, Jesus said, Go ye, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever I have commanded thee. 
Lo, I'm with thee always, even under the end of the world. Last week we baptized some converts. That's what he told us to do. And brother, hallelujah, it's a joy to me to see somebody go into that water. Even though that water doesn't save them, but it sure does testify that I'm a believer. I believe in the gospel. So when we abide in Jesus and bear fruit, we prove that God is our Father. And then, not only that, but witnessing. In Acts chapter 4, verse 20, for we cannot, cannot but speak, the Bible says, these disciples said, we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Now, the reason some church members never witness for Jesus is because they've never seen Him move in their life, and they've never heard good old gospel singing and preaching. They've never gotten a place and stayed a place long enough to really get filled and blessed, so they never talk about it. Brother, but those that love Jesus Christ and get in church and stay in church, and they hear these songs like the choir sang today and like they sang tonight, and praise God, like this old book we've got open before us right now, praise God, you get to seeing things. Uh, and I'm not talking about uh, these stupid visions and things. I'm talking about you begin to see what God's all about. You'll see that that Father, that Heavenly Father is your Father. So these people who love the Lord are happy, and they speak. These disciples were threatened. They were warned, don't preach in Jesus' name. Don't you talk about Him anymore. And they just kept on preaching, and they brought them in, punished them, and said, send them out, don't you do it anymore. Now, you've been warned. We told you, don't preach in that name anymore. They said, we've got to. All we are saying is what we've seen and heard, and what are we supposed to do? It would be really hard for me to decide right now what I would do how I would react if somebody came in this church tonight with a gun and told me to shut up preaching on this Bible. You know what I think I'd do? Shoot. That's what I think I'd do. Now, I may get scared to death and chicken out. I'm not going to be braggadocious. I'm not going to say I'm a brave person or anything like that. But, brother, if you were to try to put a gun on me right now and say, stop preaching that book, I'd say, I'll not do it. I'll not do it. You know why? Because I can't do it. I can only preach what I know. I can only preach what He tells me to preach. I can only preach, praise God, what is the truth. And I will till the day I die by the grace of God. Then our suffering, oh my. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16. If any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. True Christians, I'm talking about true children of God, they experience many troubles in this life. And we have enemies that come against us. I could preach all night long on the enemies that have come against this church, that have come against me as an individual, that have come against some of you that I know about. So they do not, they do not really attack us because we've done them wrong. They attack us because we've done right. They're attacking us because we are something they don't like. They don't like our righteousness. That's why they hated Jesus. Jesus showed that uh, uh, aggravating inner, uh, infidelist type crazy people that were had a religion but didn't have Jesus. He showed them up. He showed them up. He showed that he was the truth and that he spoke with authority and they didn't have any of that. Pharisees, scribes, Sadducees, all the rest of them, my friend lived like the devil and had their religion. But Jesus was straight and firm and honest, couldn't be anything else. And they got jealous of him. Christians, people are going to be jealous of you and me. They're going to get mad at us when we tell them that they're lost or they need to be saved. Oh, I'll take that somewhere else. I don't, I don't believe that. Well, you'll go to hell if you die like that. Well, I don't care. I, 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 I'll take my chances. Boy, I've witnessed every kind just like that. I've had men tell me every bit of that. I don't care. Well, and I say, well, now, witnessed and the guy working with one day I said now if you were to die what would happen he laughed and said I guess I'd go to hell Whew, how can you do that man when I was the drunkest and the sorest and the worst I, I never did make fun of going to hell I didn't want to go to hell I'll tell you that right now I mean that, being brave going to hell ain't brave that's stupidity that's absolute demon possession the devil's got you sewed up Brian if you want to go to hell you don't want to go to hell, I'll tell you that, right now. People in hell right now, oh, if they could only get out, but they can't get out. They'll never get out. 
You say, Brother Sammy, you're painting a dark picture. I want you to know, brother, that it is dark in hell. And there's going to be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, the Bible says. And Jesus said they'll cry for water, but there'll be none. They want that old bud. They want that old Miller high life, Miller low life. And that unwise, instead of bud, wiser, he's bud stupid. And they want that, but it won't be available. It won't be beer trucks driving up in hell saying, here, here's something good to taste for you while you're burning. It won't be any of that. So if you're here today or tonight and you're not saved, I'd make my way to Jesus before night was over. I'd make my way to Him. So, and then in 1 Peter 3, 14, And if we suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are we. And be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. So Jesus said, don't be afraid of what they're going to say, what they're going to do. Just stand for me. I'll take care of you. 2 Timothy 2, 12, If we suffer, if we suffer, we shall also reign with Him. No Christian is exempt from suffering, but we're overcomers. 1 John 4, 4, one of the greatest verses in the New Testament. This is the victory that overcometh the world, our faith. Our faith. So we've got faith, we've got reception, abiding, witnessing, suffering, but then our yearning. Here's where it gets down. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Uh, the Beatitudes are blessings. You ought to read them and study them. There's a promise with every one of them. And so we all know what hunger is. My friend, when we're hungry, naturally speaking, we're craving food. We have an appetite. That appetite is wanting to be satisfied. And we desire some good food. And of course, in the physical sense, we go where we can get some food. But then in the spiritual sense, we also hunger. And that is, of course, when you're really hungering after heavenly things. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He that eateth of me shall live forever. You eat this bread down here, you eat this food down here naturally, you'll die. I mean, the, the supper you eat tonight, it won't keep you alive forever. But the, the bread we eat from heaven will live forever. I've already tasted of him. It's good. Man, it's not an old stale bread. It's a heavenly bread. It's an eternal bread. And then we know what thirst is. We used to pick cotton in the cotton field back home, and Daddy would plant rows from here to the other side of this highway out here that long. And the woods were out yonder, and out here was nothing but hot sun. And we'd pick our cotton row out to the end, and we'd say, Daddy, we got to go back out yonder and get us a drink of that water. We had a big old jug of water under a bush trying to keep it cool and in the woods out there. And Daddy said, well, pick that row back out there. Now, Daddy, I can't go. I can't last that long. Pick that row back to the woods and get you a drink of water. My Daddy would make me pick that cotton row all the way back to them woods before he'd let me get a drink of water. Whew, I thought I would die. Felt like I was in the Sahara Desert. Never would get out. But that's the way we were raised. You were raised and you had to suffer. But boy, we, when we got that jug, whew, boy, you'd turn it up and let it run down your jaws and on your clothes. You didn't care if you got drowned. You wanted that water. And that was so comfortable. And you know what? Whenever a Christian is right with God, he hungers, he yearns after that water of the Spirit of God. You know, over there in John chapter number 7, Jesus said, I am, the, I am the water. He said, if any man thirst, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and what? Drink. Drink. And he that drinketh, him that believeth on me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this he spake what? Of the Holy Spirit, whom they would, what, uh, whom they would receive that believe. Those that believe would receive the Holy Spirit. Now what is that but not getting saved and having the Holy Spirit at the same time? He said, those that believe receive the Holy Spirit. And brother, that's what you and I thirst for tonight if we really have God as our Father. Jesus made it all possible when He was willing to come to this earth, be born of a virgin, and suffer like He did. I'll say more about it later. But brother, I, I, I can't help but love Him. So that means God's my Father. And, and God said Himself, if you being evil know how to give good gifts unto your, father, unto your children, you fathers, 
He said, How much more will your heavenly Father give unto them that ask? I'm asking. And then we have the last thing right here, the delights, the delighting. Jesus said that He delights in the will of God to do the will of God, the Father, all the time. He never did uh, shirk His duty of, or the request that God made of Him to bear our sin, take our sin away. He was willing to do that. You know why? He wanted to delight His Father. His Father wanted us saved. He wanted us to be saved and in heaven. In Psalm 119, verse 16, the psalmist said, I will delight, I will delight myself in the statutes, your statutes, God. That's His Word. He said, I will not forget your Word. So here we are, all these years later, after preaching 60 years, this book, this one book right here, we're still going to keep on doing it because I delight in the Word of God. I can't wait to get to church. I can't wait to teach Sunday school. I can't wait to preach a little bitty message like I'm preaching tonight and then go home and go to bed and sleep like a baby because God blessed this thing. So all of these are found in the true Christian who loved Jesus Christ. And our text says, I remind you again, if God were your Father, you'd love me. Jesus said, do you love Him? You say, oh, I don't love Him. You need to get saved. Let God be your Father. You can't call, you can't say Heavenly Father and mean it if you don't love Jesus Christ. Let's stand to our feet, bow our heads, and if there's anyone here tonight and you're not saved, listen, we had some souls saved the other day, last month, had them baptized last Sunday night, and brother, it was a blessing. Now maybe you need to move, maybe you need to come to Jesus. We're always available, all you have to do is let us know, come after the service tonight, and we'll show you out of this Bible how for sure you can be saved and know it. Anybody, anywhere, by streaming, if you're not saved, Jesus is available to you. You can call also. Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this great day. It's been a wonderful day, a wonderful day, wonderful experience. We've enjoyed this morning how we were blessed, how we've been blessed tonight. Blessed in the prayer room, blessed in this singing again tonight. Blessed fellowshipping with believers and blessed in the Word of God. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll defeat Satan in our life. Give us victory. Let us look to God every single day. Let us go home tonight rejoicing in our heart that God is our Father. Let us get up in the morning and call Him upon our Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we're asking for grace and mercy to be with us every step that we take. And let us be a witness and a soul winner <clears throat> for the glory of God. In